Welcome to episode 25 in our series on Rabbi Moshe Chaim Luzato's The Way of God. And we are still in the fourth section of the book, which is entitled Serving God. And we're about to start the second half of the sixth chapter. The sixth chapter being entitled The Order of the Day. And in the last episode, we, we tackled the first half of this chapter, which dealt with <clears throat> the various obligations and what we must do throughout the day, starting from when we wake up in the morning and we must cleanse our hands ritually. We must don our tzitzits and our talis and tefillin. And uh, that was last episode. This episode, we're going to continue for the second half of this chapter, which deals now initially with the morning prayers and, and its subdivisions. So the Ramchal begins or continues. The morning prayer service is divided into four general sections. The first, or Korbanot, involves readings associated with the sacrificial system. The second, Pesuke de Zimra, consists of psalms and other biblical praises. The third is the Shema and its blessings, and the fourth is the Amida and concluding prayers. The readings associated with the sacrifices or korbanot in the beginning are intended to purify the world as a whole and remove all obstacles and barriers that would hold back the highest sustenance. The biblical praises or pesuke de zimra are intended to cause the light of God's presence to be revealed. God made this depend on the singing of his praises and this is the meaning of the phrase he chooses songs of praise. Although we have already explained the significance of the Shema and its blessings in general, they also include another aspect. The order of systems and sequences that exist in creation has already been discussed in the first section. All things exist in a sequence of steps from the fundamental forces down to the physical world. The highest wisdom decreed that in order for all things to receive God's sustenance, they must first bind themselves to each other. The lowest things must bind themselves to those above them, and these in turn to the ones that are still higher, continuing in this manner until the root forces, which in turn depend on God himself. His sustenance is then extended to these forces, and it spreads downwards appropriately to all levels of creation. In this manner, they all regain their ordained level and function. The blessings of the Shema were arranged so that they should relate to these mysteries. Through this liturgy, every level of creation elevates itself until each one is bound to the one above it and all are bound to the highest level. When they are all bound together and dependent on God's light, sustenance can then be transmitted to all of God's handiwork. This, in turn, is accomplished by the Amida. So the Ramchal is now going to describe the significance uh, and the divine influences uh, of three general types and the merits of the three patriarchs and King David. This is in the beginning of the Amida prayer, which is a highly significant uh, form of, of prayer. Uh, so the Ramchal continues, in order to understand the significance of the Amida, we must first be aware of a number of fundamental concepts. God's influences in general are related to all creation through the Tetragrammaton, the four-letter ineffable name, yud K of K. The highest influences are divided into three major categories, and under these three are categorized all other types of influences in all their details. The three categories are alluded to by the first three letters of the Tetragrammaton, Yud, K, Vav. In order for all creation to be perfected, these three letters must be brought together and their interconnection is alluded to by the final He. These three primary categories are also alluded to in the initial descriptions of God 
found in the Amida, namely the great, mighty and fearsome. The merits of these patriarchs, the three patriarchs, Avraham, Yitzchak and Yaakov, is the factor responsible for bringing down to earth the three categories of heavenly influence. The process is completed by the merit of David HaMelech, which unites with the three influences, and through this joining of David HaMelech with the patriarchs, rectification is achieved for all Israel. The first three blessings of the Amidah were ordained to parallel the, first, the three categories of influence, and through these blessings the influence is brought down to creation as a whole. The thirteen middle blessings then serve to distribute the influence to the different components of creation as needed. In the end, through the final three blessings, this sustaining influence is strengthened and integrated into its recipients through the thanks that are given for it. This is the function of the Amida in general. So fascinating. Uh, may, perhaps some of us don't realize the metaf metaphysical value of uh, reading the Amida and especially reading it when you understand more about its power and w what sort of uh, things it generates in this uh, unseen universe, this metaphysical world, this chain that the Ramchal has described directly to God, uh, down to us. Uh, now the Ramchal is going to describe how the Amidah is also instituted for holy days. So the Ramchal continues, This is the weekday order, as we have mentioned previously. On holy days, however, only seven blessings were ordained for the Amidah. These days have their own intrinsic blessing and sanctity, which transmits God's substance. All that is therefore needed is a general effort, and this consists of the seven blessings of the Holy Day Amida. These seven blessings consist of the same first and last three as in the weekday service, which pertain to the three general categories discussed previously. The middle blessing relates to the general sanctity of that day, causing it to be strengthened, shine forth and rule, thus enhancing and perfecting every detail of creation. We will speak of this further in a later section. Now the Ramchal is going to describe uh, something a little bit more esoteric and metaphysical. Uh, he's going to describe how creation is divided into four worlds. So the Ramchal continues. It is also necessary to realize that there are four different worlds. The physical world consists of two components, the celestial and the terrestrial. The celestial is the realm of stars and planets, while the terrestrial is our realm, here on Earth. The two together comprise a single world, the physical. Above this is another world, namely the world of angels. Higher than this is yet another world, a third world, that of the highest forces, as discussed earlier in the first section. The third world is called the world of the throne. On a still higher level, we can speak in general of different influences emanating from God, revelations of his light from which the existence of everything in creation is derived. In a manner of speaking, the realm of these influences also can be termed a world, one which is usually called the world of God. However, the term world does not really apply to this highest domain, except in a figurative fashion. Regarding all of the three other domains, however, the term world is appropriate. The reason for this is that the phenomena called world is defined as a collection of many diverse entities and assorted principles, divided and interrelated in various ways in a single conceptual space. This definition of world applies to any such collection, whether the individual constituents are physical or spiritual. 
The physical universe is considered a world because it contains terrestrial and celestial bodies within a single concept of space. The same is true of the realm of angels. For this realm too contains a collection of angels and spiritual entities in the conceptual space that pertains to them. The world of the throne also is a world in so far as it contains numerous forces, all spiritual, within one common conceptual space. Influences emanating from God, however, cannot be considered diverse entities at all, for they are not phenomena which are individual, one separate from the other. Rather, these influences are types of spiritual light which God reveals according to his will, and through them God avails himself to his creations, bestowing upon each one according to its nature. The emanations, in a way, are distinguishable from one another, and for that reason the, world, the word world is somewhat pertinent to them. But distinctions exist only in that emanations come in differing orders and at different levels, depending upon the creations which receive them and through them become distinguishable from one another finding their own levels and roots of existence through the agency of these influences, as mentioned earlier. This world thus is higher than the other three, for in sequence all the others lead up to it, the physical world depending upon the world of the angels, and the world of the angels depending upon what is above that, namely the throne, and the throne depending upon emanations of the light of God, which comprises the true root of everything. The four parts of the daily prayer service actually parallel the four-part structure of creation. The first three parts of the service rectify the lower worlds, that is, the readings about the offerings, or korbanos, pertain to the physical world. The praises, Pesuke de Zimra, to the world of angels. The Shema and its blessings, to the world of the throne. Afterwards is the Amida, parallel to the world of God, and the Amida serving as a catalyst, helping to incite the emanations from God in all of their aspects. The Amida is followed by three other prayers, each contributing to draw downwards a continuation of the emanations, world to world. These are the Kedusha of, of the Order, um, the Psalm of the Day, and Ein Keloheinu, Nothing is Like Our God. At the end of the service, having taken, partaken of God's blessings, we say Aleinu to reiterate that God is king and to spread his kingship over all of the worlds. Attachments to this order are other prayers designed to incite God to bestow both mercy and additional blessing. These are the confession or vidui, the 13 attributes and the falling upon one's face in the takanun. The purpose of the confession is to prevent the accusers from speaking out and causing the service to be cast aside. We then recite the 13 attributes of mercy because they have the power to cause God to be grasped through his attribute of mercy, so that through his superior authority he should overlook sin and have compassion even when merit is lacking. The falling on one's face in Tachanun is also a high degree of self-subjugation before God. It therefore has the power to appease the attribute of justice and arouse great mercy. God's sustenance can then be transmitted with blessing and abundance. This is the general arrangement of the daily service. The precise order of the Psalms, biblical readings and other details depends on the details of what this service is meant to accomplish. One also must know each day is divided into two parts, first the morning and then the afternoon, which is called between the evenings. As discussed earlier, the night too is divided into two parts. 
In each of these four periods, God's illumination and influence must be made available to all the worlds in the necessary way for that particular time of day. It is for this reason that a fixed number of daily services were ordained. For the morning and afternoon there are the Shacharis and Mincha services. Since the morning is the time when God's sustenance is renewed for the entire day as a whole, it requires a longer and more inclusive prayer service. In the afternoon, on the other hand, only the latter portion of the day is the concern and therefore a lesser amount of effort is required. The Mincha service is correspondingly the shortest of the day. The changes involved when Ma'ariv time comes around are great, the difference between night and day being greater than the difference between morning and afternoon. It is for this reason that the Ma'ariv or evening service is longer than the Mincha service. The Ma'ariv service thus also contains the Shema and its blessings, but, since the sustenance of the morning service is still retained, the blessings are much shorter. No universal service was ordained for the second part of the night, since this would unduly burden the community. A midnight service, or Tikkun Chatzot, exists, however, but it is only des designated for the especially devout, who rise and cry out to God, each one according to his own understanding. The evening Amida itself was not compulsory, even though it was later accepted as an obligation. The midnight service, or Tikkun Chatzot, is therefore certainly not compulsory. The three main daily services were ordained by the patriarchs, and are therefore a universal obligation for every Jew. The midnight service, on the other hand, which rectifies the second half of the night, was something that King David voluntarily accepted upon himself, and he thus sang, and I quote from Tehillim 119 verse 62, At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you. Together with the patriarchs, David HaMelech, or King David, thus completed the rectification of Israel, as discussed previously. Because King David was on a somewhat lower level than Avraham, Yitzchak and Yaakov, however, the service that he ordained did not become a universal obligation. It is therefore upheld only by the particularly devout. On the holy days, a Musaf prayer or additional prayer is added in place of the uh, additional Musaf sacrifice that was offered on these days. This is related to the additional sustenance that is granted on such days according to their holiness and other aspects. So that concludes this, the sixth chapter, the order of the day. And the Ramchal expertly describing and explaining the various aspects of our daily prayers, the significance of the attitude towards uh, the, the, these obligations that we take upon ourselves and the effects and the holiness and I think uh, especially relating to the section where he describes the four worlds and how each section of the daily prayers and the morning prayers especially are linked to them, to these four worlds must give us great uh, encouragement the next time we pray, to have this in mind, and perhaps just having this new information in mind, for me it's definitely new, this new information, perhaps that will help this kind of mystical influence that we are able to uh, apply to these four worlds. Who knew that by simple silence or softly spoken prayer we could affect metaphysical universes? So this should be very encouraging. Wonderful, it's a wonderful chapter. And in the next episode, we're going to, uh, chapter 7 deals with periodic observances. And that should be very interesting.